Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how you operate your Valiant EcoFit Pure Combination Boiler. I'll show you how to adjust your hot water temperature so you can make it hotter or cooler, and that might make your boiler more efficient. I'll also show you how to adjust your central heating to make that hotter or cooler, and that will definitely save you some energy if it's set correctly. I'm also going to show you how to turn comfort on and off. That's Valiant's preheat for the hot water. Now I find most people don't know what the comfort setting is. Now you may actually have to set it turned on without you knowing about it. Now I always recommend having a setting turned off. And of course in this video, I'm gonna show you how you go about turning it on and off, which again may make your boiler more efficient. If you have the Valiant 24 hour time clock and you want to know how to set those times, turn it on and off, then I made a separate video all about doing that. And you can find that video in the cards above now, down in the description, and it'll also be at the end of the video. If you've got a Valiant filter fitted and you want to know how to go back cleaning that out, then of course I made a video how to do that. You find it in a link above or down in the description. Now we're going to quickly whiz through my intro, then get straight on with that video. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. If you think this video is useful, then click on that subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video or in the cards above. This is your Valiant EcoFit Pure Boiler and it's a fairly straightforward boiler to operate. Now this boiler has a analog clock, you may have a digital clock, or you may not have a clock at all in the boiler. You might have a programmable room thermostat like this Honeywell T3R. But the rest of the controls I'm going to show you are exactly the same. On the front of the boiler you have your digital display. And if you push any button it will light the display up so you can see it a lot clearer. So we have a picture of a tap here and we have a picture of a radiator here. By pushing the button directly underneath the picture of the hot water or the radiator, we can adjust the temperature of them. There's a gauge on the side here and that shows you how much pressure is in the system. I call it a tank and you want the black level indicator roughly in the middle, so in between the two dotted lines. And I'll show you how we adjust that in just a minute or two. Also on the front, we have the temperature of the boiler and that's the temperature that the boiler is at now. To turn this boiler on and off, all we need to do is press this button here. This is the reset button. Push it once like that and you see the display now says off. And now you can't get central heating or hot water. So we push the button again and that will bring the boiler back on again. And then you'll hear the boiler go for a little startup process. Just a little note, make sure that all your hot taps are turned off when the boiler is starting up. Now I'm just going to show you the display in operation. So if I turn the central heating on and I can do this from this timer on the front of the boiler like that. And I need to make sure that the room thermostat is also turned up. We'll then see the radiator symbol come up in the display indicating that the central heating is now on. And then in a short while we'll then see a flame come up in the left hand corner here indicating that the boiler has lit and it is now operating and heating up your central heating. We just have to wait a second as the boiler measures the flow and the return temperatures and then it'll then bring the gas on. I'll just push the buttons to light it up and there it is. There's a little flame in the corner indicating that the boiler has now lit and it's heating up the central heating and we see the temperature on the front of the boiler starting to rise. If I turn the hot tap on you'll see the tap symbol comes up in the display and then starts flashing to indicate that the hot water is in use. And the flame will stay on and again you can see the temperature rising as it's heating up the hot water. And then if I turn a hot water tap off, the tap goes away and it'll go back to heating up the central heating. If we want to adjust the temperature of our hot water, all we need to do is push the button directly under the tap. If the display is not lit up, then you'll need to push this button twice. Wants to light it up and then wants to go into the setting. But because mine's already lit up, I could push it once and then go in and adjust the temperature of my hot water by pushing the plus or the minus buttons. Now the hot water on this boiler is set at 47 degrees. Now I can increase this by pressing the plus button. You can see it's now 51, 52, 53, and I could take it right up to 60 degrees. 
but 60 degrees is really really hot so I'm going to put this temperature back down again like this so I'm going to press the minus button so we can adjust that temperature down I'm going to take it to 50 degrees about 49 50 to set that temperature you'll then need to press the button directly underneath the tick like that and now the water temperature is set at 50 degrees I can push the back arrow which will take us back to the home screen now when I go to customers homes I regularly find that the hot water has not been set or adjusted and the customer has no idea that they could adjust it. If you've not checked the temperature of your hot water then it's a really good idea at the end of this video to go and check what the temperature is set at because there is absolutely no point in heating the hot water up to a high temperature just to cool it down at the tap with some cold water. You're just wasting gas, increasing your energy bill, adding extra wear to your boiler, adding to scale buildup on your plate heat exchanger, which may mean that that heat exchanger will need to be changed earlier than normal, and of course, adding to climate change. So what temperature should you be setting your hot water to? Well, 50 degrees seems to be a pretty good average temperature. But if you find this is still a little hot, then just adjust the temperature down a little bit more. Having said all that, there are a couple of occasions where you may want to have your hot water a little bit hotter. One reason is for your shower. If you have a mixer shower which runs off your hot and your cold water, then you may find if the water is not hot enough, when you turn your shower up, you can't get your shower as hot as you would like it. In that instance, you may need to have your hot water set a little higher. Now, most showers can be adjusted manually inside, but you would need the instructions to do this. Now, another reason you may want your hot water set a little higher is if you like having really hot baths and also topping your bath up with hot water. In that instance, you may also want your hot water set a little higher. Now, if we press the tap button again, you'll see that there is another option on the right hand side here. So if we push that one there, we go to the next screen where you can see it says COMF, which stands for comfort. Now, you can also see it's flashing on off. So the comfort is turned off right now. Now, what comfort does is it keeps the boiler pre-warmed. So it'll keep the boiler warm all through the day and at night when you're not using it so that when you turn the hot tap on, it doesn't take very long for the hot water to come out. Now, I always recommend having this turned off, but it does mean it'll take a little bit longer for the hot water to come out of the tap because the boiler will now be cold and we need to warm itself up before it can produce hot water. Now you may find it's actually better for you to have this function turned on and if you're on a water meter you'll also use a little less water but don't forget you'll be using more gas because you're keeping your boiler preheated. Now to turn this function on and off all we need to do is press the plus or the minus button. I've pressed the plus button and now that's changed to on. I'll then press the tick to save that setting. I can press the back button to go back to the home screen. We can then see then there is now a C in the display indicating that we have the comfort turned on. So that's preheat now turned on. So when the boiler cools down, it will fire up and warm itself up again. To turn comfort off, all we need to do is to press the tap button again, press the other button to go across the comfort. And now I'm gonna press the minus button. You can press either, but I'm gonna press the minus. Oh yeah, it says off, press tick. Now comfort is off. So now I press back and that takes me back to the home screen where we can see the C has now gone away. So that covers how to set up your hot water temperature. Now to adjust our central heating temperature, we need to press the button underneath the radiator. Now this temperature doesn't adjust how hot your house gets. That's the job of your room thermostat, but how hot your radiators get, which in turn will affect how hot your house gets. So push that button and you can see the display says 65 degrees. That's the recommended optimum temperature for your central heating on a condensing boiler. Now these boilers do work more efficiently if they're set at a lower temperature. So you could try pressing the minus button and turning that temperature down a bit. Providing your house stays warm enough for you, then that's great. You can set it down as low as you can get it. The boiler will work more efficiently and save you some gas. But when winter comes, you may find your radiators just aren't hot enough and you need to just turn that temperature up to make your house a nice comfortable temperature. When we start going above 65 degrees, the boiler starts losing efficiency, but we could set this right up to 75 degrees and then your radiator will be really hot and the house will warm up really quickly. But like I said, that is a little less efficient. I find most modern boilers today have some kind of eco setting for the central heating and that temperature is at 65 degrees. So adjust that down to 65, press tick, 
That's then set. Whilst we're adjusting the central heating, if we push this other button, this will take us to the pressure that is in the system. And we can see at the moment it says 1.3. And when we look at our little tank, you can see that little black fill level is not quite in the center. And I'll show you how we go about adjusting this and topping your boiler up in just a minute. We can just leave the display and it will automatically go back to the standby screen. Or we can just push the back arrow and it will just take us back to that standby screen also. Now, if you ever get a fault code come up in the display, now this is an F29 fault, which is the flame has gone out when the ball has been in operation. Now, the only way to remove a fault code is to press this button here. That's the reset button, apart from the F22 fault, which I'll get to in just a second. So I'm just going to light the display up by pushing any buttons to make it a bit clearer for you. And then we're going to push and hold that reset button for five seconds. It then says reset and then release the button and then the boiler will restart and then it says loading as the boiler restarts and loads up. Now, if you do get a fault code that comes up on your boiler, it is perfectly safe to press that reset button and restart your boiler. You can take a look in your installation manual and that will show you what the fault code means. But if the fault code does keep coming back, then it indicates that you do have a fault with your boiler and then you want to call a gas registered engineer to come and take a look at your boiler. Because if you are continuously resetting your boiler, then you may actually be damaging your boiler. So get it checked out by a gas registered engineer. I left the link in the description below, which will take you to the gas registered engineers in the UK. Now I'm going to show you how we go about topping up the boiler. Now, if the pressure drops too low on your boiler, that's when you'll get the F22 fault come up in the display. Then all we need to do is to just top up the boiler and the fault code will go away. What we need to do is to go underneath the boiler and then we're looking for two valves to open up, which will top up the boiler. So it's this valve here and this valve over here that we are interested in. Not that one, not that one and not the gas valve. This is your cold water inlet valve and this is your central heating return valve. Now this one's quite tricky to turn, so I always recommend turning this one first. So I turn this valve like that. You can see it goes in a clockwise direction to open it. It's then vertically up and down and not horizontal. Then we need to open this one here. But before we go opening up that valve, it's a good idea to go back to the display, press a button to light it up, we could then open the valve and then raise this black fill level to roughly the middle of the two dotted lines. Now I can also press the button underneath the radiator and then press the button again to take it to the next menu where we have the exact pressure that is in the boiler. So you can see it says 1.3 bar and that we got the fill tank level showing it's just below the middle of the two dotted lines. Then we need to go back into the boiler and I'll put our hand on that valve. Now what I recommend you do is you keep your hand on that valve whilst you're topping up and you don't take your hand off because you don't want to over pressurize the boiler. So now I've started opening up that valve. You'll hear some noise as the water starts going in and then we'll see the pressure start rising. And there you go. You can see it's 1.4, 1.5. Now you should be aiming for about 1.5. I'm going to set this boiler at 1.6 because obviously I'm going to leave this house and I just want to make sure she's got a little bit more pressure. So if it does drop a tiny bit, she's not going to need to call me out to refill it. And there we go. That's now at 1.6. I'm now going to close that valve straight away as soon as it gets to 1.6. There you go. That's turned all the way around and make sure it is all the way around. And then when you finish doing that valve, make sure you close the other valve also. Now these valves can get really tight over time. You could try using a big flat headed screwdriver to turn them. So that's it. That's a pressure topped up. Both the valves are closed and then we can go back to the display and we can leave it as it is and it'll automatically go back to the standby screen. Or we could just push the back arrow and that will also take us back to that home screen. And there we go. That's how you top up your boiler and remove that F22 volt. Don't forget, if you've got this timer and you want to know how to set it, I've left a link at the end of the video, which you can click on in just a second or find it down in the description. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to watch my next video, then you can click on the link just here. And if you found my video helpful in any way, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And like I said, that will help others to find your video. And if you enjoyed the video, then you can click on subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. 
And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Bye for now and I'll see you next time.